Hey guys, I'm Jim WT1W and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. So today I want to share some things that I've been really gotten into in the last couple of years uh, since I've been a ham and it just kind of happened that way. 3D printing. Is it something that's useful for amateur radio? I think so. I've found a lot of uses for it in amateur radio and I wanted to take take a minute here and show you a few things that I've come up with or discovered about 3D printing as it relates to amateur radio stuff. And I'm going to jump in and we're going to look at some, some different screens uh, on some different items that are available. And then I've got some printed examples here that I want to share with you guys. So let's, uh, let's get right at it. So first of all, there's a whole lot of pre -design, already designed 3D models available on the internet all over the place. A lot of them are, most of them are probably free to download. There are some that are pay um, specific models. Generally the ham stuff, I haven't found a whole lot of pay ham stuff models. And when I say models, the file that you put to your 3D printer. So typically these models are all free uh, for you to download and print out and use at your own leisure. If you 3D print things for other people, a lot of these models are also free for commercial use. Uh, under the Creative Commons attribution license. Those can be reprinted by someone and sold, for example, uh, in a commercial environment, whether it's, you know, at a ham fest or online on eBay or Etsy or, or whatever. And there is a ton of people that, that sell stuff that they have downloaded for free, but the license allows them to print it and sell the finished product commercially. And that's more than I wanted to get into that, so we're going to move along. One of the biggest things I've seen in the 3D printer ham space is just a lot of quality of life things for your radio or your go kit or your ham shack even. So I wanted to kind of let's, let's go through and look at a couple of these things and see what they're about. So I've just got some examples pulled up here. These are kind of random. This is an 891 rail. So if you have an FT891, you download this file, you print out two of them, and now you have a set of safety rails that you can put on your radio. And this will protect your radio so that if it falls off of something, hopefully the rail will eat it before the, the screen or the knobs or the connectors on the back. Because you can imagine if you dork up the, uh, the SO239 on the back of the radio, that's going to be an expensive fix. So... This is a very common thing, and there are rails available for just about any radio you can think of. Certainly, all the recent models, 7300, 991A, I've seen FT710 models, FT817, 818, 857, 891, yada, 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 the list goes on and on. FTDX10, I mean, there's just uh, ICOM radios as well. So there are a lot of rails available and that's one example there some other rails in a quick search i searched for radio rails of course we have an ad here for skin cream or something it's not going to help me at this point but you can see here here's ft991 rails here's a set of rails for a couple of different president bill model cb radios here's some rails for a yesu ft1500m uh, which I have one. I've done a previous video on this radio. I got it at the Stone Mountain Ham Fest, and it was a great deal for 20 bucks, and it works great. Uh, here's side rails for an FT100 HF radio. So this is just a quick search for radio rails. And, you know, the search engines work as well as you'd expect. Sometimes you might need to be a little more specific or a little less specific. If I type Yesu rails, I'm probably going to find a different set of stuff. There's more out there than rails. So, for example, there's antenna bits, right? Here are parts right here to help you build a Yagi antenna. So it's not just plastic rails for specific models of radios. And this guy that uploaded this has uh, parts, and he uploaded this as a parametric build, which means you can put in the actual dimensions, and it will generate the correct part based on your dimensions, not specifically a pre-built thing, that fits the parts he bought. So if you have four millimeter rods for your Yagi antenna, you can create 
the parts to put together four millimeter rods instead of six millimeter rods, for example. So there's antenna, antenna related designs out there. That's one of them. Another one is a quarter wave ground plane antenna kit. This looks like, and I, I haven't read any of the information about it. This looks like nothing more than a plastic ring to hold the pieces of coat hanger wire together. So, uh, you know, that's pretty ingenious. And there's a ground plane for your two meter, your two meter rig, right? Pretty cool. Uh, here's some more guardrails. This is a set of rails for a 991A. A lot of these are designed to be used for, with the rails, for example, or be designed to be used with the existing screws that you would mount the radio zone bracket on, like the mobile bracket, for example. A lot of them will tell you you need to, you need to buy some M3 or M4, 12 or 15 or whatever millimeter length screws to mount the bracket, the rail to the side of the radio. And generally that's in the design notes that goes with the file. So that's pretty cool. So what does it look like when we're printing some of these? Well, I happen to have a live print running right now. We can jump in and look at that. This is a set of rails for an IC7300 printing. And you know, this camera is not designed for a beauty shot. This is showing me that the thing is printing and it's, it's not making a mess. That's about all you get on a lot of 3D printers with the camera, it is not. HD quality video kind of thing. I'm going to roll in some footage now. Let's take a look at a print I was doing earlier. And then we'll come back and wrap this up. And I'll show you some things I have printed. And we can take a quick look at those. So here what we're looking at is my printer. The, this is the Chidi Plus 4. Uh, it's a fairly new model. It's only been out, I don't know, five, six months. And we're printing some brackets right now. And this is for the 857D. And these are the typical kind of side rails you see on a, a lot of radios. And this is a freely available file from Thingiverse or Printables or Maker World somewhere. It's probably on all, all three sites. And what we're doing here is obviously printing the rails, but you can see that we build these from the ground up. So as the print starts, the bed is up closer to the print head and we lay down the first layer over here in the corner. If I can get my mouse over there, you see right here, this is the uh, purge line is what that's called. And on this version of Clipper and on this printer, it prints the purge line relative to where it's going to actually put the print. Um, older versions kind of printed this long purge line down the side and across the front, but with the uh, camp plug-in installed it, it just does a small one right here by where it's going to print. So anyway, um, what we're looking at here is what's called infill. And infill is one of the things that determines the strength of a print. And the other thing is how many walls, how many outer layers or shells, depending on your slicer, that the print has. So I think on this particular print, I'm doing four walls, and then we have about 15% infill. And the infill pattern, there are probably 20-ish infill patterns. And I'm using one here called Lightning. Some of them are faster, some of them are slower. Some of them possibly add greater strength. Um, there are several that are adaptive, as in the slicing software decides exactly what to print for infill and so on and so forth. And this print here, I think, took about two hours or so. For this particular print. Now the other thing is with any 3D printer, what you can print on it and how it gets printed is dependent on the size of the bed. On the Chidi, this is a 305 millimeter by 305 millimeter print bed. So that's over, over 10 inches if I just metric that right in my head. So I can print a fairly large print. However, even with something like this, these rails are going to be longer than the bed. So you have a couple options. Uh, this particular pattern here uses a dovetail to connect the, the front and back pieces together. But if this was a single piece, and there's a lot of the rail designs that are single piece, I could potentially print it angle-wise and I get more distance that way. So we jump forward a little bit here and you can see now that the printer is finishing up the rails. All the innards are done. And now it's putting the final touches on the top surfaces. 
again, those extra walls and everything so that this will be structurally pretty sound. Now it's plastic, so, you know, your mileage may vary with that. But this is a great way to protect that very expensive HF radio. All right, so here's a few examples of things I've printed that are related to amateur radio. And I have several, and some of them are directly related. A few of them are tangential to amateur radio. Let's take a look at what we've got. So, for example, here is a guy ring for a DX commander pole. If you want an extra one or you've just bought a pole, which doesn't come with die, guy rings, for example, if you buy it from DX Engineering, print this thing out, and this is strong enough and printed out of the right filament that this will last outdoors for years. This is a set of wire guides for soldering wires. And you basically put your wire in there, get them touching, and then this holds the wires while you put solder on it. This happens to be in two colors because I ran out of that color and changed to black and finished the print. So that's what that's for. Stupid little thing. I mean, this, this is nothing to, to make, to 3D print, and very useful if you have to solder wires. Now, I will say, and this is kind of obvious, I would think, I printed this out of PETG, which is a higher temperature filament, but if I drop hot solder on this, it's, it's going to melt holes in it. And, you know, at some point, this 50 cents of plastic, I'm going to have to throw away potentially and build, make a new one, print a new one. These things are not toothpaste caps. Oh, slow your roll. These are covers for connectors. So these are for SO239 connectors. Put these on the back of something you're not using. There you go. Typically, the SOs and the ends, I believe, are pretty close to the exact same diameter. So you print out one and it'll cover both of them just fine. We also have some BNC style connectors and you can tell this one's a BNC because you can see the little, the little um, slots there for the tabs on the side of a BNC connector. So these things, you print a whole plate full of these and leave them laying around and you've got them. I mean, I've, I've got a ton of them laying around so I keep things covered up. It'll help protect it if it hits something, keeps dust and grime, pet hair, whatever, out of your connectors, right? This is a case I printed for the VE6LK um, Morse code trainer. I haven't actually fastened the lid down. This design I found on, online. I don't remember if it was Maker World or Thingiverse, but printed it. I made a little modification to put my call sign on it. I actually uh, printed one of these for the smoking ape and wrote ape on it instead since no one knows if he even has a call sign. And it's a sturdy case and it's got the cutouts already made for the connections you need to make uh, and anything else. And you'll find this, these things, there's for the uh, power on that side. That's kind of a little bit of a screw up on the printer's part there. I think I nipped it with uh, side cutters just to clean it up so I could get cables in, but typically I don't have that problem. Occasionally, eh, you know. Anyway, so there's that. On Ham Nuggets the other night, uh, T.O. and I were talking about the Nino TNC that uh, TarpanNet has on their website. There are three or four different models of cases you can print for the Nino TNC. So that's very useful, certainly relative to ham radio. Cable clamps. There are two or three, four, five, 10, 20 designs of these things available online. This is a, a design that actually the size was smaller, but I scaled it up to uh, print it a little bigger. And it's designed for larger, thicker cables. I mean, it, it ain't really gonna work for coax, but like longer USB cables or radio connector cables or power cords or whatever. And um, you put your cable in, you snap these two together on the sides, and it keeps the cable from going crazy in the, in the drawer or in your bag or wherever. So as you can see, there's quite a range of things. This last thing is an FT-857 rail. And this is a, a nice rail for the 857, it's long. So what the designer did is put a dovetail in it so you can print this on even a smaller bed printer like something like an A1 Mini. I printed this on uh, the Chidi Plus 4, which you saw the video from a little bit ago, 
which has a fairly large bed, 305 by 305 millimeters. So I didn't need a two piece design, but it's fine. And because he did a dovetail here, even though it's two pieces, once that's screwed to the radio, that thing is gonna be rock solid and it'll protect the front and the back of the radio. So there's that. In any case, you can see that there are just a number of things you can use a 3D printer for in your ham shack. And this is a, you know, just a quick five minute demo of, of stuff. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for this video. I will put links to where you can look for files in the description below. I also put links for the printers I use. I have four of them. I have a Bamboo Labs A1 Mini. There's the Cheedy Plus 4, Q-I-D-I, Cheedy Plus 4, which is my newest printer. It's a big boy. And then there is the Creality Labs K1 that I have. And then there's the FL Sun Super Racer. So I have four printers. I have probably three more printers than I actually need, but don't tell my wife there might be another one on the way. That's all I got for today, guys. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not. Ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new vids. Thanks, y'all. 73.